Hello and welcome to another episode of TFG Indian Football Roundup presented by Rayor. Kevin, everything seems new. It's new for you, it's new for me, it's new for everybody in 2020. I think the things that uh, we, we've gone through, everything uh, feels uh, fresh and uh, thankfully, thankfully football is making things right, it's making things smoother and yes, it brings to the best discussion that we we missed for so long man it's been such a long time i'm telling you it became depressing towards the end it was like one week to go five days to go three days to go just waiting just i i'm tired of all this talk uh, of previewing of uh, waiting of bio bubble and uh, this person has covid that player has covid all this uncertainty i just wanted everything to just go away all that talk and just let football happen for a moment and that's what we got last night it was not the best game it was not like uh, you know a mind blowing action happening uh, that uh, completely took us uh, aback but we got a game it happened nothing too bad uh, like nothing unusual took place it was a 1-0 win for atk mohan bagan and uh, kerala blasters lost uh, their opening match of the season overall impressions kevin chiranjeet firstly it, it feels so nice to hear the name fully and correctly from your mouth it's really you know i was waiting for if you'd make a mistake in calling out your renamed team by their appropriate name and i, I think you got full marks on that atk mohan bagan atk mohan bagan i, Bro, I think i'm going to say mohan bagan as many times no, as no, i no, want no no you you just that's that's a totally yeah. different entity it's not football if you're going to just say mohan bagan you can talk about t20 cricket ultimately it's the mohan bagan athletic club out of which uh, the football department is a subsidiary mm. and that football department is using the brand name atk mohan bagan fc so you can say atk mohan bagan you can say mohan bagan what you cannot say is just atk If you do that, man, we're gonna stop the episode. No, right no, there. no, no. If you're going to talk about Mumbai City FC, it's okay to just mention Mumbai. If you're going to talk about ATK exactly. Mumbai, A- ATK Mohan Bagan, it's fine to just say ATK for a mention. That's fine. No, no, no. It you can say Mohan Bagan because that would be appropriate. Mohan Bagan is the identity of the team. So you can say Mohan Bagan, you can say just Bagan. A lot of the commentators were saying during the match, just Mariners and Bagan. just to shorten it because atk mohan bagan fc does not exactly roll off the tongue and you are used to saying mohan bagan all the time anyway so that's still okay but just atk that's actually a mischaracterization of the team not really so, it starts off with it with it atk it doesn't start off with mohan bagan and end up with atk so you have to no it's sc east bengal is still east bengal you know mcdowell mm-hmm. mohan bagan was still mohan bagan you know united sc how many sponsors they got i forgot and, uh, like prayag united chirag united they were still united sc you talk about so, sc east bengal yeah. you know you you're mentioning sc as the title sponsor there's a reason they they've incorporated their name or the initials there they're, they're saying sporting club uh, is you bengal, can say right? that but then atk is not going to go away from atk mohan bagan you'll have it's to it's going to go away you'll have to get used I to that i will give you i will give you at best 3 years or 4 years it's going to go away because of the way the mohan bagan fans have been protesting they don't want a brand which carries the identity of a previous club which has been shut down mohan bagan be fans want the... nothing else other than protest i feel no they they don't see the see this is what a lot of people have been getting wrong they don't they just don't want their like tera naam nahi rahega mera naam rahega it's not as simple as that when you are trying to question the identity of the team the way that stupid washing machine ad did what happens is that you are putting a question on the years of loyalty that these uh, uh, fans have shown towards the club and it's also their personal memories that's why it feels so personal every single fan has years of memory of 2 years old 3 years old like sitting on an uncle's shoulder and going to watch a match you are trying to question the identity and history of this team then you are saying all those memories of those fans that they have had that becomes invalidated like this is not the same team they are not connecting to their ancestors when they are supporting this team so that's when the anger takes over you know and that's what you have seen in social media it's gonna become 
an actual fan movement in the galleries it's going to become uh, marches it, uh, real life keeping protests. the the emotions in place keeping the history and the national club title in place you know it's i'm just saying it's fine to once a while just say atk in reference to the atk mohan bagan really. isl team not really it's a so passing what is, reference what does even atk mean what does even atk mean so it, atk is a short form of what was atletico de kolkata right that's what is uh, carried over so that's could again not memories atletico de kolkata because it's, atletico de it's an evolution too. from from a uh, from a spanish tie up to a spanish team we are keeping the spanish yeah, coaches so it's, it, it's, they, a, it's also it's a got a historic from a connection club. from 2014 it's not a historic connection bro there is no history to connect 2014 history was created in indian there football there was no history what is what history Six man 6 years of uh, history took out a rally you you can you can keep they a side took out a rally in front of uh, east bengal and mohan bagan fans and asked for ask them to support them because they are not direct competitors that's what happened and it it was never going to go anywhere it was uh, declining anyway but i think and, uh, uh, the point here is uh, football you know, football brings us joy and uh, we can keep the anger and the emotion and the titles aside and uh, what what brings us closer is the the, the joy and the happiness and i think what we, what we absolutely. will be really missing on the all the fans will be really missing is you know the action that they could have enjoyed on field Uh, what a terrific moment uh, that everybody is just being at home you can look at the faces of, of those who are in the videos uh, of of the video wall what is it called uh, that's put up on the stadiums i think uh, they'll probably be fan wall a fan wall they really have to be on their toes you know you never know when they'll be spotlighted some of them really i i, I could caught, catch them a bit uh, dozing or just looking aside they really have to be <laughs> they, they don't expect it's, it it's a bit of a bit tacky man <laughs> anyways wonderful it's wonderful to you know see some football action and uh, after all the merger or you know however you put it, it it's happened you know he's been on mohan bagan it's not a merger but anyway you can just shorten it to that that's the thing like we, when you're talking about the whole kgspl mbf cpl deal it's not always possible to just explain the whole complexities and nuances when you're just having a conversation it stops stops any conversation that you have so people say merger is like ha yaar kya merger and it's just it's just in that state that we are in so it's it's going to continue i think until that atk prefix gets removed and uh, once that goes away then there's nothing to uh, get mad about or talk about uh, in that sense. Now when there's But, mohan uh, bagan is yeah. bengal you know, the madness cannot be taken away everybody has absolutely it. not absolutely and this madness is so much tied to that identity and that history right which is why this kind of reaction you get because it's a, it's a asset a uh, 131 years of history is an asset why would you want to put a question mark on that it was a stupid decision uh, taken by the branding whoever marketing people are there and it was a good thing to see that they started changing their tune leading up to the launch of the ISL they were like showing mohan bagan's legacy star sports was showing they were talking about uh, you know mohan bagan's uh, previous record and everything they stopped imposing atk's record on uh, this team we've talked enough about it uh, it's going to take its course there's mm-hmm. going to be more controversy regarding this until that prefix goes away yeah. we'll, we'll get to it when the time comes right now it's about the match that happened we saw two teams that were not at their best yet they gave it all out there you could see the players really going beyond themselves to put in an effort even when uh, the pre season was not uh, optimal even the conditions were not uh, ideal what was the thing that really stuck out to you from any previous season's opening match that you typically see clearly chiranjit i think everybody is facing that that time of football and it was showing on field you know uh, going by football uh, the terms you could see clearly the coordination from both teams and some of the players w- was off it, it it it's not anybody's fault you know you, you've been away from the field for so long it's a new team new setup a uh, new philosophy from both coaches even though you know you, you might have players who played together earlier but it it was really looking clumsy at times and that's okay you know that's that's truthful i i really want to complain about the quality uh, 
to being top notch in the in the first game itself it will settle in for both teams but uh, it's it's a different game altogether you know, five substitution it really makes a difference you know, from uh, being tactically uh, forced to make substitution to to forceful substitution to really you know, keep game changing your 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 trump cards you know some of the changes that uh, coaches used to make were very uh, time based and uh, looking at the score and the league positions so it's going to change everything uh, as it's going to see uh, an evolution in the way uh, things have been played from the coaches end as well and injuries uh, obviously will be a part of this so we already saw uh, uh, an injury taking place in the first game uh, so say raj you know it was a bit unfortunate there uh, but it is all part and parcel of uh, all, all the seasons but yeah the striking uh, contrast was uh, the quality may not have been uh, as expected by everybody after such a long time but you can give it a ta- give give it everybody a moment to understand and settle in and soak in that that feeling that you're back on field you know even though there there's no crowd but you're already under pressure you know it's a, it's an expanded league and it, it's going to be a longer season obviously owing to uh, being in that bio bubble it's it's security it's insecurity so many things in in the th- in the players minds yeah absolutely you know uh, the point you made uh, uh, what happened to north east united they got a couple of uh, bubble breaches that gave us a pretty hard scare that is this going to spread to the other players and uh, staff and are they going to be able to field a team or are they going to have to isolate and miss the first couple of weeks this this kind of thing has happened in america in uh, other countries where uh, entire teams have been like rendered uh, unable to play and that's a threat that isl is going to have to face and it's a longer s- season as you said it's not like i league qualifies do teen hafte mein ho gaya so it's it's a less upkeep that is required on the bubble this is a much more complex operation and so far the isl organizers have been doing a fantastic job just to keep the ship going so many things could have gone wrong i mean it, it we've seen like not all the stuff that we can discuss uh, that has happened uh, especially in the isl qualifier bubble it's it's not been made public but it's extremely difficult to monitor like hundreds of people's movements and just confine them to this uh, small area that they can go around and these are outgoing people they don't want to just sit and uh, you know these are not desk job people who are comfortable with sitting all day they want to move around but so anyway uh, what really stood out for me in that match was how kerala blasters were playing actually because kibu vikuna a new team is brought in a few of his uh, uh, new uh, choice foreign players he signed a few good domestic players and and uh, a huge transformation also uh, important players like sundesh jingan left the roster they looked like it was almost there but not really they were moving in a way that would have been way more effective if there was a bit more pace but that pace was not there because uh, it uh, they don't have the kind of fitness yet uh, it was like they were giving the passes and the, just the positioning was a bit off couple of times they created chances but the finishing was off all of these are symptoms of an unfinished preseason and you can expect them to get better as time goes on but that's the question that's going to plague them this season like early matches how many points are they going to drop yeah i think it's uh, fairly to uh, just to analyze what you can expect from these teams you can't really jump the gun and make uh, statements say we can expect this 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 from so each of the teams but uh, it's it's something magical about our uh, you know, kibu vikunia here uh, he's really transformed a team which we we've not used to seeing it earlier kerala blasters were never really a team that which is played out from the back and you could see the passes being played to the goalkeeper and then uh, you know there's a drop from the midfield end to receive the ball there's there's quite of turns uh, changing the flow of the of flow, flow of the game uh, rather than just moving from one wing to uh, you know forward they're moving in from from the center as well so that that's a kind of uh, it it gives you a, a, an illusion that you know this is not uh, probably uh, you're going to be stopping at at as much as you see here it's going to be evolving over time 
and uh, we've seen it with uh, Mohan Bagan as, as well. I will say Mohan Bagan because that is the team he coached earlier. And uh, yes, uh, it, it's nice to see a refreshing change in Kerala Blasters uh, for, for, for the time being. You, know, you can uh, see glimpses of what we can see evolve out of this philosophy. He has so many ways. Uh, Kibu Vikuna playing his first game as Kerala Blasters head coach uh, against the club that he was coaching and uh, you know coached to a championship, memorable championship campaign last season. And uh, he was going up against his successor basically. That dynamic made the game a lot more interesting and in so many ways, Kerala Blasters looked exactly like Mohan Bagan looked earlier in the season. You know, if you remember the way they played in Duran Cup, in Sheikh Kamal International Club Cup, in Calcutta Football League, no one was giving them much of a chance, especially after Churchill Brothers completely ransacked them earlier on. But then they signed Papa Babaka Diawara and uh, all of a sudden the chances they were creating were suddenly getting converted, then the team got better, the coordination got better and they just started bulldozing everybody. you see any player in the Kerala Blasters roster that can do this? Yeah, I think I think there are a lot of players who can really turn turn the things around. Um, looking at especially how uh, his emphasis has been laid on uh, Gary Cooper, there you know we we got high hopes that he's going to turn into a goal machine very soon. Uh, yes, uh, it's it's a bit early to you know throw out figures that uh, this could happen. You know what what will be a key role here is. Uh, how does the midfield you know become that flexible type where you can expect a lot of cover to be given to the back and uh, you saw one mistake uh, le- leading up to the goal you know that that's something that's expected because it's a fresh set up there again if you if i have to pick up a, a couple of players uh, sahal is playing again an important a vital role in this uh, philosophy uh, you might see him a bit rusty you you did see him miss completely miss one or two shots that you know could have just gone through the uh, through the net but he will be the vital player in in this team uh, the rotational captain policy that uh, many teams are opting for over here uh, costa so he he had a couple of blocks made early on in the game i really think you know he will be the man uh, to look forward uh, when it comes to single handedly ma- managing the defense he he was exceptionally good yesterday uh, and no we we can see a lot more uh, from uh, the foreigners especially you know costa i, I really ha- had an admiration for him the way he was holding on to the defense and uh, managing the traps of the offside as well meanwhile mohan bagan though it seemed like they are playing in isl as in indian set piece league uske ilawa kuch nahi ho raha tha they wanted to hold the line of defense and uh, just play these long balls and uh, see if they can uh, create chances and if they are not taking those chances from open play no problem just get a free kick or get a corner when the other team was showing initiative they were just happy to just sit back and uh, see if they can just get a chance no suomoto approach to make the game interesting or just come out and Uh, get the win i think they were just there uh, with the idea that if they get a draw that's going to be good you know it's it's an away match let's get a nil nil draw and take a, take away a point again that's uh, not a, chiranjit yeah. what i feel over here this is typical habas here you know you, you've seen uh, a couple of coaches uh, prior to him also you know try this this approach where uh, they don't really want to keep the ball and they're looking for those you know smart and quick blazing counter attacks and probably that that is one of the keys that habas has used earlier in his you know stints and uh, this was a similar state it's it's easy to understand the coaches also do not do a background of uh, how they expect the opposition to play and uh, he he probably had a fair idea that uh, you know kerala blasters would be keeping the ball as as much as they want and, and it's a patience game and uh, you know habas is more uh, more direct there so what i feel we we can see a bit of uh, this repeated over time because habas is you know one of those coaches who who can uh, have less possession but he can still make it uh, you know uh, be a favorable having the score line be on the, on their favor but uh, this might come back to bite them later on because we don't have the same kind of uh, equations going on that were there in other seasons when travel was involved actually going and playing away matches are, are involved 
here there are no home or away matches like you're going to play a good few games in every single stadium like three stadiums are there you're going to play four or five we're going to play more in the stadium that you've been assigned but the other two are also going to have four or five matches so there is no home there is no away there is no supporters pressure you have to take every game as if it's a home game because that's what it practically is so it's it's a bit of a baffling situation that uh, we have seen and I, and I hope this changes because let's face it in atk fc you could finish fourth and win the playoffs and just be called a hero that doesn't happen in mohan bagan you know it's emphasis on this is not the same club you're not going to get the same response mohan bagan believes in finishing top of the table and everybody knows afc has completely made it clear that the league stage is the actual top division league the playoff is just an add on separate whoever finishes top of the table gets the league winner shield and that's the title for the champions of india which fc goa holds right now and if you get there you get to play in the afc champions league that should be the target for every team it seems like havas is already thinking about securing a top 4 place the way he's uh, doing his i match. believe uh, no it's it's probably a match by match uh, that we can see the strategy is changing and here uh, it could have been uh, better if uh, the ball was in the opposite opponent's possession rather than their own because it's like early on in the season you might not have that much confidence in keeping the ball as much as you can you know be the poacher and you know rely on counter attacks probably you know we will see that change in the coming games and the opponents as well yeah it's going to be the derby which we're going to talk about in detail later on but before that if you are a kerala blasters fan we have a pretty amazing offer for you as you know rior are the official kit partners of kerala blasters and the official kerala blasters merchandise is now available for purchase on www.riorsports.com and there's an early bird offer that you can avail right now the early bird offer includes an exciting discount of 15% on a card value of 500 rupees to 1499 rupees and for a card value of 1500 to 2499 you unlock a discount coupon worth 25% of the purchase price a whopping discount of 35% is unlocked on a card value above 2500 indian rupees the early bird offers are valid until the 25th november of 2020 so if you're listening and it's still time go directly to reorsports.com it's r e y a u r sports.com and get yourself this sweet early bird discount that's not going to be around for much longer so kevin you like the kerala blasters t-shirt designs this time yeah i think uh, it's something it's a, it's a refreshing change uh, it does uh, you know again the prominent yellow is still there and uh, might as well it will be a good option to try it on and look in front of the camera and support kerala blasters if i am a fan of kerala blasters Yeah absolutely and I really like the way they uh, did that t-shirt design contest like that third jersey is designed by a fan and they're paying homage to their heroes and that's going to be a kind of a collector's item I would say because those kind of special occasion jerseys don't come around so often but speaking of yellow from one club that prominently features yellow to another East Bengal are also in ISL this season notice how I didn't say SC East Bengal because you don't have to it's east bengal and it's mohan bagan we all know the derby it's been around for 100 years 99 years to be exact we know the rivalry we know the fan bases we know the stakes we know the bragging rights we know the history and it's printed on the back of our heads it's east bengal versus mohan bagan on 27th and in so many ways this does not feel like a traditional derby and i'll tell you why one is the obvious there is no Uh, crowd it's not happening at the salt lake stadium we're going to miss that as atmosphere second it's happening on a friday which is bad idea it should have been on a, f- a sunday and the third is that no build up usually there is a reason uh, in i league in cfl they never do the derby up front they always give it five or six rounds in so that there is a natural build up to every game and they uh, there's every match and they see the team play and uh, it all 
turns into a giant trailer for the Kolkata Derby because that's how the conversation develops. That's how the anticipation builds up. This time they did not wait. Yeah, because it's, like East Bengal is coming because into Because it's Iceland. not Mohan Pala Balan versus Derby. East Bengal. That is the reason. Bro. It is not. Like, don't get me started again, bro. <laughs> This is this is the derby. Look, uh, you saw that uh, tweet by Akash Sharma. Uh, like uh, they was uh, he was saying that the whole uh, Kerala Blasters versus Mohan Bagan game was uh, like a trailer for uh, uh, Kolkata Derby with a match in between. It did feel like that. They were building up towards that because they know that's where the money is going to be. Like ISL's popularity is going to explode immensely exponentially because they have this derby which is a global attraction for hardcore football fans and it's going to become the most watched football match in the history of indian football next friday it's it's massive bro i mean they they do recognize it that's why there is so much emphasis put on it without that east bengal and mohan bagan would have been treated like dempo or uh, salgaukar all these other clubs you know, there is there is a reason why these clubs got a bit more special treatment than the other clubs. It matters that we talk about the heritage. It matters we talk about the rivalry because it adds to that intensity. It adds to that, adds to that narrative of the league that we are building here. It's, it's about telling a story as well, right? And would you rather talk about... 10 teams who are all born in 2014 and uh, have uh, similar rich owners and similar fan bases or would you rather talk about one team that was born uh, 131 years ago with a one kind of history than another team with another identity with another kind of history and how they collided over time how they built up to where they are it's a much better story and why should we be shying away from it? It makes no sense, bro. Yeah, it could be, you know, but uh, one big reason the the derby doesn't feel like the derby it's because of the fans. You know, it, it's totally missing the atmosphere, the environment that's created physically. So, so this this that is probably something something to do with the situation here, and it, it's everybody's helpless here. But uh, coming yes, coming to the title of the derby i think nothing comes close to seeing these two teams clash and it's it's all part of the build up to the to the derby and uh, this really feels uh, a low down on from you know what we've seen over the years not see a big uh, you know uh, a marketed build up here but it's it goes same for for the league as well we've not seen it being marketed heavily as much as it was in 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 the, these four six years so probably that is one of the reasons that's you know not taking up so much of the marketing effort yeah it makes sense uh, i think part of the reason is also that east bengal got into the game late uh, they put together the team uh, later than anybody else and uh, there is understandably a question mark of how soon they can get their act together and how soon they can uh, be effective and uh, maybe they just thought let's put them up against their rivals at the beginning because maybe if uh, they're not doing well later on the derby might not have that kind of pop or that kind of enthusiasm which is wrong i mean whoever made that decision should know that no matter what happens even if one team has the, is at uh, number one and the other team is at number 11 the derby would still be uh, intense in the same way attractive in the same way and watched in the same numbers because uh, there are two people on earth who can actually give you a prediction about the Kolkata Derby you know there's one who is uh, Shubhash Bhumik and Subrata Bhattacharya if you are not one of these two people I'm sorry you can't tell me what's gonna happen in the Kolkata Derby it's impossible to predict all that emotion that goes into it all those pressures that uh, accumulate uh, when the players are going into the derby, especially when so many of them are playing it for the first time. In fact, I think every single foreign player is going to be playing the derby for the first time. And maybe they will not actually face that visceral atmosphere, that, that rush, that fear, that, uh, that adrenaline of walking out in front of uh, 100,000 uh, fans and taking in that noise and understanding 
my god i can't even hear the person standing next to me i have to spend 90 minutes right here and every single time i make a mistake that it, it's 100000 people giving you instantaneous feedback that hey you're fucking up so that that kind of thing completely changes the state of the mind of the players and it really affects uh, the way the game is played and it it comes down to nerves may not be that intense this time because of course the fans are not there but i'm sure they are paying their uh, paying attention to their social media feeds they're listening to what the people are talking about they're hearing stories from all these uh, players they have in the team uh, who have played in the derby before jj uh, pritam shubhashis these are uh, people who have grown up immersed in the culture of that kolkata derby so they all understand this they're all keeping everybody updated on what winning a derby means so it's it's still going to be very different from any other game they play even if the fans are not there you know the, the fans will make themselves heard, heard one way or the other what do you think yeah that's there that's a big miss for everybody who's who's been been part of either of the teams there and even for a neutral who's who's probably aware of you know what they bring into the field what emotions uh, is connected it's it's all a miss for them and uh, you know, i think 2020 that that's cause of all the pains here yeah, you you still have not attended the derby right no i haven't next season you're coming man i'm it's it's on me i'm hosting you we're going to watch the derby we're going to just enjoy the whole day we're going to go early in the morning uh, stick around around the stadium we're going to see the fans arriving like all those uh, people who come from south bengal north bengal who have been uh, journeying for like 14 15 hours on trucks and uh, buses to get to the stadium and the whole build up that happens of people just waves and waves of people who are how, how is it different in in the press box for during the derby press box you miss out man <laughs> you can't react all the all the most of the uh, most of the journalists just lose their cool because you know they they pretend like they talk like they are neutral all of them uh, love the sport and they uh, grew up uh, supporting this team or the other you know there there's not a single neutral person <laughs> out there in the press box but uh, people try to contain themselves but it just comes out which is why i always prefer just being in the stands because you know you want if if there's one game where you really want to cheer you want to shout you want to just leave your emotions out there is the derby which is why if you're experiencing the derby the first one should always be about as a fan and i i don't care which side it is and even if you if you don't support support uh either is bengal or mohan bagan you should still go and you should just pick like okay i'll uh, this time i'll go with this uh, crowd next time i'll probably sit in the other side's crowd and just experience the conversation that happens the this this commune that happens this commune of 100000 souls that uh, express their anger at each other frustrations at life of changing times and at the same time they're nostalgic they're looking forward to the future but they're still reaching back to their history they're connecting to their roots uh, expressing their identity uh, there's uh, rivalry there's uh, enmity there's friendship in a way and afterwards if unless like something very bad happens during the game you'll see some east bengal and mohan bagan fans who are actually friends and they will just get together and grab a drink <laughs> and just cool down and it's that is that period you experience for the next few days that it's like i just was part of something that's truly much bigger than myself <laughs> you know it's it, it's almost like an out of body experience it's basically like uh, doing ecstasy i'm signing up for a bengali course uh, for for preparation for the next derby next season obviously uh, half the time they uh, shout in hindi because uh, they want the players to understand as, as, as if the players can hit, uh, hear the individual what fans. I, but they want to make sure what they're saying <laughs> is being understood <laughs> either way it's, so all of that is absent like we're just talking about things that are not going to happen this season but uh, what's going to happen is robbie fowler a player of legendary proportions who has become a coach in the last few years you know he's been coaching here and there and uh, he, of course he understands liverpool he understands a fan culture i'm not sure he understands the pressure of being a head coach in a match like this what do you think you're a coach you understand like the the, the 
if you go to a new team new club you're dealing with a new sets of players and uh, there's a culture to it that takes time to get used to and immediately if you are being faced with the most important match of the season without even getting a proper pre-season camp you're dealing with restrictive conditions all of a sudden you're facing the biggest task there is in indian football i think like, i think do, does it even register it's it's very difficult to digest the fact that fowler is going to be facing mohan bagan in his first game etk mohan bagan that is you know that, that itself is 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 something that uh, you cannot take it off of your mind and for me it's it's a bit of a feeling that this is not 2020 it feels 2014 for seeing fowler in this role here well, because this is intense this is no longer the isl that we used to see where uh, you know we had player come manager uh, who could do both roles uh, being a player and handling the the, the 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 responsibilities of heading the team it's no longer a two month season this is for real this is the top league of the and this is going to t- get you into the continental championship for me you know I'm, i might get a lot of hate for this i don't feel that fowler with his experience in the managerial for for you know in such a short time is the is the ideal candidate for 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 running the show here it gives me a bad feeling that you can expect you know things to shake up really badly very soon because you know a lot of factors here uh, it's it's a whole new team for him it's a whole new setup for the players themselves it's not that we've seen the core of the team being retained i think we when when we break down into the into the strengths and weaknesses we'll get a, a clear picture of what what this is about as uh, as the top tier of the indian football this doesn't feel right as the choice that east bengal has gone ahead picking robbie fowler with relatively less experience and you know heading into such a big moment uh, of the season already this this is probably going to be the most watched kolkata derby ever in terms of uh, online and tv viewership there's no doubt about that and suddenly we are in a situation where we have never seen east bengal play before like they're going into the game we don't know how the partnerships work how the defense adjusts we have not seen robbie fowler in this role at all so it's very hard to even gauge uh, how the whole thing is going to play out do you think this is an advantage for east bengal or is it an advantage for mohan bagan because they already got to play a match uh, it was uh, not an easy opponent n- no matter how much uh, it it appears as that way uh, because the game was so lackluster it it was a difficult task and they got a game time they experienced competition they got back into that groove and they are going to go up against a team that has not done that yet they play friendlies but uh, you know a competitive game is very different so whose advantage is it i i don't believe anybody is at an advantage here because chiranjit uh, even though if you count one match as an advantage because they they started earlier it doesn't really count for anything because you you've got uh, coaches who are tactical analysts as well you're looking at your own player strength you're looking at the opposition so you just no using your crosshairs to dissect and bisect each tactical decision that was done earlier so you can even count it as an advantage to east bengal because you you've seen your opponents play you you can probably uh, pick out which players to 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 to, to focus more and over what will be the channel that the the passes will be coming through now you can easily cut off the channel but i i don't see any advantage to any of the teams being being fair to robbie fowler you no know, there's a lot of uh, uh, positives that we can uh, expect here is one is renadi singh being the assistant to him you now he's seen indian football like nobody else and uh, he is part of you know the uh, the the players association for for football as well and he knows players in and out he knows their problems and you know, he he should be uh, giving you that edge to communicate with players you know that that is something very important to play a role as an assistant because you know players have to bond well you know that that uh, that is very important because you have a foreign coach in in place and uh, with relative less experience you know that's uh, that's the part where the indians as in assistants bridge the gap and i i i wouldn't again coming back to your point of uh, is there any team that has an advantage 
I don't see that. You're right about Renedi being there and he's a, such a eloquent speaker actually. He can communicate what it means to play in the derby, what it means to the fan, what it means to the clubs, what they are participating in, you know, what epic that has been unfolding for a century that they have become the latest heroes of. And uh, you can go back a few years and listen to that podcast that we did with Renedi Singh. Uh, did a long interview with him and uh, he was so in depth in his uh, knowledge of indian football of course it's it's kind of given he's played so many derbies he's played so many, uh, so many years uh, captain the national team he was really great at expressing it of just using a few words and conveying the details of a nuanced subject and uh, it it was a very good uh, podcast and uh, you should uh, go back and give it a listen he actually makes a few predictions of what's going to happen uh, to indian football in the next few years and almost all of them turned out to be true so very interesting one uh, if you want to take a look back at the past but given uh, we have already seen mohan bagan play against a team and uh, we've seen them reacting to situations and uh, in some ways that's an advantage that robbie fowler has how do you think they're going to approach the game they're going to uh, hold back and uh, see if they can draw mohan bagan out and uh, see make them make mistakes or they're just going to go offensive directly uh, it, it's going to be balanced again uh, i i don't expect uh, too much aggression from east bengal one because uh, look at the players that they've chosen for this team now quite recently if you see uh, lindo he he's been off action for some time and jj he's he's gone through a surgery vinith has been not uh, at his you know, you know firing best and balwan singh just keep these players together in your mind and understand what an experienced set of players are coming into the derby now that itself gives you a strong foundation for the team core and that's precisely you know what might have been into the minds of of the selectors and you know, to go ahead and probably if, if even if it wasn't decided that the derby would be the first game it, it, it still makes a solid core to have at the back of your mind that you know these are the players who who who've been into the national team regulars playing and derby is not something that that scares them you know, they, they they've already gone through this n number of times so that for me is, is a great strength for east bengal to to move into the derby absolutely and it's not like we're going to see too much uh, surprises from uh, habas's mohan bagan because uh, we know what he does you know we know uh, he likes to go into the deep waters uh, he plays the patience game uh, wants the opponents to make the first move and uh, uses that counter threat Uh, to get them uh, out of position, sees if they can make a mistake, and which which is what happened against Kerala Blasters. Uh, defensive mistakes, do you think, are going to be a, a story for the ISL in the first month at least? Because uh, all those chances that were created, really good chances, some of them. Ultimately, it the the goal came from an error, and uh, because so many teams are under prepared, uh, the defensive coordination is going to be off and. we're going to see more goals like this that are not going to look so good won't be the best advertisement for indian football but it's a reality we're dealing with right now isn't it but again uh, just going back to that mistake you know just this point of reference there it it's it's difficult to digest that it it came in from a defensive error because if you see uh, the kerala blasters were really playing with fire there uh albino wasn't in any rush to clear the ball and he was playing it with his defenders he was drawing the the strikers towards him you know that was the whole plan and seeing a mistake you know i think it's it's okay you know once in every uh, 10 games if you see something like that it's not going to count for much so i i wouldn't really see a trend of defensive mistakes uh, because it's all uh, in a phase that everybody has those shaky legs and the uh, no coordination will be a miss in in the initial stages but uh, again everybody is learning from watching others as well so you don't want to do the same mistakes that you've already seen others doing so yes uh, hopefully we we don't see you no know, uh, errors leading up to the goals we want to see in you know, some quality passing 
good build up from the back from the wings in between from the center channels now that will be something what were what watching in the derby or because it's already you know hyped up so much yeah it's going to be interesting no matter what and as i keep saying if you're a long time listener of this show you know the point i keep making every single time there is a derby whenever east bengal or mohan bagan have lost a derby they have not gone on to win the league that has been true across nfl that has been true across i league and i think it's going to be pretty applicable to isl as well top division league if you lose a derby you don't finish top of the table that's been the history going back to 1996 and it's going to be equally relevant now uh, going into this match which further adds pressure if robbie fowler knows this fact or uh, i think some of the players would be aware of this your debut match is something that is a historic significance where if you lose you don't win the league anymore imagine the uh, the significance and the pressure that adds i i think the chiranjit you are nobody can beat you with the facts and and your intuitions but uh, remember this is a whole new level of football for everybody and you know stats past may not matter because again it's not about uh, getting into the playoffs it's again finishing on top of the league that will get you into the continental championship and everybody is well aware of that i think getting into the isl itself is a big task you know, it it really w- took everything from everybody to to reach this this spot and nobody wants to let that first season the debut season just go as of okay this was just a first season everybody wants to be at the top you not know, finish and get into the the champions league or champ afc champions league and nobody wants to be that second place third place it doesn't really matter if you're not at the top because you may even go ahead and win the playoffs but this is not the isl that we've been used to seeing it so long and uh, that for me is the biggest advantage of seeing mohan bagani is being all here because it it promises so much action so much we've already seen one ad what what can mean to the the digital world that everybody is following so so widely and uh, well, we hope to see some great build up to the derby you know not just you know the sad sad uh, marketing statement we really want to see something that you know draws up on the history what these two represent to indian football and yes looking forward to this in a way the presence of these two teams is uh, quite disruptive to the isl power structure because uh, we know mohan bagan is going to be like one of the teams that's pinned as a title contender and that's going to be true for mumbai city as well they have a very good team and that's true for fc goa i mean they won the league last season bengaluru fc every single time they don't win the league next season they come back and definitely win the league like 2014 15 they didn't win the league lost the title on the last night of the league against mohan bagan next season champions next season they finished fourth in i league then came to isl twice back to back top of the table then we had a previous season when they finished third and if the past history is anything to go by they are uh, supposed to finish at the top of the table again so we have uh, these three very established top of the table contenders there already and i was thinking kerala blasters might be uh, a dark horse chennai and uh, chennai and jamshedpur as well but maybe East Bengal will turn out to be the dark horses because completely shrouded in secrecy. New team, new coach, everything starts from zero for them, and uh, nobody has seen them. Nobody will even see them coming. If something is really interesting up Fowler's sleeve, he's gonna be able to use that element of surprise. Yes, Chiranjit, I think a lot said about what you can expect from both teams. uh certainly going by uh, the first match that we seen mon atk mon bagan play uh, they look like you know, they they've got a lot more sl- uh, tricks up their sleeve rather than what what we just saw and uh, you're terming east bengal as the dark horses you never know you know dark horses are the ones who, who change things as as everything is going right and th- it th- might just turn up as, as a surprise holders of of, of the title and uh, when everybody is you know not giving them too much too much edge at the moment 
now it is good to be on on the dark horse side rather than being on on the on the contender side so it probably you know takes your mind off the pressure a bit are you saying east bengal are favorites so chiranjit that is what you are saying and that is what you have been saying for so long but that's not what i meant and uh, i do feel you know uh, not being on on uh, the, on on the scarier part but uh, east bengal do look like uh, they may not have a great first half of the season but they might just pick up in the second half well i think they are favorites man i keep saying every season they are favorites and they have been favorites every season and i think on friday against mohan bagan they are the favorites as well thank you for listening to this episode and thank you to rayor they are bringing you an exciting offer of 15% discount on a cart value of 500 to 1499 rupees and for a cart value of 1500 to 2499 you can get a discount coupon worth 25% of the purchase price a whopping discount of 35% is unlocked on a cart value of above 2500 indian rupees the early bird offer is only valid till 25th november 2020 so go over to rayorsports.com right now and get your piece of official kerala blasters merchandise we'll be back very soon with the next episode give me and kevin a follow on twitter if you want to keep up with our updates and every update about indian football whether it's isl i league ifa shield women's football it's all going to be available on at the rate tfg football on twitter and of course all the in depth news analysis interviews exclusives columns It's all going to be on the fangarage.com. Give this video a like, subscribe to our channel and make sure not to miss out when we drop our next episode. Bye.